Please put your hands in for Mr. John Sesta! I was working at a comedy club, doing two shows, and a girl saw my early show and heard me profess my love for crazy girls. And she wanted to talk to me after the show, but she was nervous. So she decided the best course of action was to go to the bar and drink by herself for three and a half hours. <laughs> Which is already kind of a wherefore art thou Juliet situation for me, I'm not gonna lie. So I finish the late show, I get off stage, and I hear from the far end of the bar, Hey! I need you to know one thing! I was just out trying to get my medicine, and I allegedly wrapped my car around a pole, and those motherfuckers had me committed! <laughs> You are really funny, can I buy you a drink? <laughs> and I was like, I have the weirdest boner right now. I don't even know. <laughs> so she starts telling me her whole life story. How when she realized she was gonna flunk out of college for the second time, she decided to spend all her student loan money on ecstasy. <laughs> and find the cars of every single dude she'd slept with at the college and just key the shit out of them. <laughs> you guys know that voice in the back of your head that warns you when something terrible is about to happen? Mine was going, dude, your Honda's a lease. <laughs> So the night keeps building, the night keeps going on, she finally says, hey listen, uh, I've got some pot out in the car, if you go out there, I'll smoke you out, I'll get you high. I said, thank you, I'm flattered. Uh, I don't smoke pot, I don't get high. Uh, I'm a drinker. Yay. I'm a drunk. <laughs> I think someday there'll be a civil war between our two great nations. <laughs> and I've already picked my side. <laughs> She digs her nails into my inner thigh, gets an inch away from my face, and says, I fucking love civil wars. <laughs> so we're planning a summer wedding. Uh, <laughs> our colors are royal blue and crushed up Vicodin white. <laughs> And we are registered at Macy's, Nordstrom's, and a truck stop that sells samurai swords. So, give with the heart. I told that story on stage in Kentucky, and a guy runs up to me after the show and he goes, Man, I love swords! <laughs> Solid opener. We could be friends. He goes, wouldn't it be cool, wouldn't it be weird, if we lived like back in medieval times, like the Dark Ages? And I go, yeah, man. Like a small group of people controlling all the wealth and power of the entire country and using religious zealotry to justify a war in the desert? Weird, right? <laughs> and he goes, Nah, I just want to ride a horse to work. <laughs> and Scully falls me on Twitter now. So. <laughs> we have a good time together. Crazy girls and young girls. Not like creepy young, nobody texts Chris Hansen. Like, it's not a thing. Like, girls born in the 90s, that's my thing. It's great, you guys, they've never heard 90s songs. I can just quote 90s love ballads to them, and they've never heard it. They just think I'm being romantic off the cuff. <laughs> Take a girl, I'll be like, listen, babe, I would stay awake just to see you dream. <laughs> and when we're together, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, babe. And I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> it does not work when you're breaking up with them. <laughs> and my advice if you're breaking up with them and they figure it out, just lean into it full force. Take your out and be like, listen, babe, if I were to stay, I'd just be in the way. But I'm thinking of you every step of the way. <laughs> Is that a Whitney Houston song? <laughs> Are you breaking up with me to a Whitney Houston song? And I will always... She gets up, runs out. I force some tears. The hostess comes back. It's like, what happened? I'm like, I just told her I loved her. <laughs> And that is how you become a 30-year-old in a sorority formal. <laughs> Politely declining a, a keg stand because you're worried about your heartburn the next day. 
<laughs> that's heard that. Um, I'm not ready to grow up. I'm not ready to grow up. I'm not ready to, to date. I'm especially not ready to have kids. Uh, I'm from the area. It's nice to come home and see a whole bunch of people that I know and I'm friends with. Uh, and they've all started popping out babies. And I'll tell you guys, I have a rule. I don't learn my friends' kids' names until those kids start walking. Because that is when my friends start yelling at them. Like, for the first few months, it's like, look at the baby. Have you seen the baby? Would you want to hold the baby? Oh my god, isn't this the cutest baby? Let's put the baby on Instagram. Which filter should we use? Ooh, Hefe looks good. He looks tan. Hashtag tan baby. <laughs> but as soon as the baby starts walking, they're like, Atticus! Atticus, get away from the plugs! Atticus, Jerry, the plugs! The plugs, Jerry! Atticus! <laughs> and I'm in the corner like, Atticus. <laughs> That was that kid's dumb fucking name. <laughs> Real truth, by the second or third kid, I never learned those kids' names, because I don't see those friends anymore. <laughs> They'll message me on Facebook and be like, Hey John, what'd you do this weekend? And I'm like, oh my god. We went to the dopest restaurant. They take craft bourbon and distill it into cheese, which they make nachos out of, Mumford and Sons showed up, played a secret show, we all went backstage, did cocaine off a of loot. It was the best. <laughs> what did you do this weekend? We well, you know the baby's here now, so... <laughs> Atticus saw a light. <laughs> it was a good day for the family. <laughs> Last winter sucked, I woke up one day, the Detroit metro area had gotten 18 inches of snow, and it's basically just me and Darnell left to shovel, so that was a bad one. <laughs> my day job's for a university, so I ran to the TV, I'm like, my university's gonna be closed, yes! I'm gonna get an adult snow day! I'm gonna build a blanket fort, I'm gonna order pizza, I'm gonna go five, I'm gonna go watch Five of Goes West! I'm gonna get an adult salary while I do it! Adult snow day, yes! <laughs> my university was still open. <laughs> What was closed, though, was the University of Phoenix, Ann Arbor. It snowed so much that closed an online college. Do you know how soul-crushing that is? The weather's too dangerous for cute cat memes. Get in their office. So my mom calls me up and she says, Hey, listen, this winter sucks. We're going to the Bahamas. Grab some friends, me and the whole family, you, me, your stepdad, your aunts, we're going to the Bahamas, we're having a great time. Let me tell you how I ruined that vacation for everybody involved. <laughs> I went with my family, like I said, I'm close with my family, and if you think you're close with your family, spend a week with them on an island where there's no internet and beer is $54 a case. I'm gonna see a darker side of Nana that week. <laughs> the only thing on TV is cricket, and nobody knows how cricket is played. I saw three cricket highlights, and two of them were just dudes shrugging, like, is this over? <laughs> the score of the cricket game was 218 parentheses 48 to 7. <laughs> that's not a sports score. That's math. That's homework. I'm on vacation. Fuck off. I'm not doing this. <laughs> And so my thing was swimming in the ocean. I love swimming in the ocean. I have dated so many art school crazy chicks, and swimming in the ocean is like nature's equivalent of that. Just like the waves passively, aggressively asking for space. <laughs> but at any moment, the wind could change, suck you down, and fucking kill you. Like, that's my thing. And I love night swimming. I love just getting liquored up and swimming out there at night. And that was my mom's breaking point. She came out and she was like, Get out of the sea, John! You've had too much whiskey! Get out of the sea! You've had too much whiskey for the sea! She just kept yelling whiskey and sea because apparently if you get my mother angry enough, she turns into a Hemingway character. <laughs> and I'm out there drunk as shit, just going, No, Mom! Sometimes you gotta swim out in the unending darkness and scream because you're not sure where it begins and you end! <laughs> Because apparently if you get me drunk enough, I turn into Sylvia Plath. <laughs> Taylor Swift for the non-readers. 
so she busts out the big guns. She goes, John, there are rays in the sea. The sea is full of rays. You don't know where the rays are in the sea. One Australian dude dies from a ray. It's apparently my fucking problem. <laughs> and by the way, tone it back, Fox News. Not every sea ray is a murderer. <laughs> so I oblige her. I swim back in. Next day, we're sitting on the patio, having coffee. She points down, right at the edge of the water. Two stingrays. One big one. And one little one. And she says, See, John, I told you. <laughs> Rays in the sea. <laughs> I said, yeah. And the big one, it's probably the little one's mom. And it's going, stay away from the beach! There's people on the beach! <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. John Spencer.